Hi everyone, this is Paul Davis and today I will be showing you the four best, most amazing electrical guitars in this house. Yes, so I was asked to do a guitar collection video. I did one over a year back about my acoustic guitars. That's actually outdated at the moment because I already got a new one. But today about my electrical guitars. Let's start with this beautiful Gibson Les Paul 59 reissue, magnificent maple top, beautiful flamed on this beauty. Mahogany back, mahogany pretty thick neck. And this is hands down the most beautiful Les Paul I've ever played. It sounds great, full and lush. <laughs> Just a beautiful, beautiful instrument. So I was looking up the build year of this thing. Let me grab the Gibson COA, Certificate of Authenticity. So what it says over here, Gibson Les Paul 59 reissue, serial code 99579. So the first nine is that it's a 59 reissue instead of a 60s or a 58 or whatever. The second nine is the build year. So that's real smart to do one number for the build year because now I don't know, it's a 2009 or a 99 or an 89. I googled some pictures, I think it's a 2009, which makes this actually a 50 year anniversary model, which is pretty cool. And at the bottom of this certificate, there is some sort of stamp, some sort of a anniversary thing over here. I don't know, man. So if anyone can help me out with that, let me know in the comment section what you think. So a beautiful guitar, two humbuckers, and the output of these aren't that high. So that makes it, for me, a perfect guitar to use. It's not that super overwhelming as many of Les Pauls are. So let me put on Crunch, King of Tone by the way. Beautiful sound. Heavy lead. Yeah. For me, this is working. What else can I tell? So it's actually not my first Les Paul. I got another one, a Gibson Les Paul Gothic, matte black. That's just nothing compared to this one. That's why I actually stopped caring about Les Paul like a few years back because that Gibson Les Paul Gothic was just, I was so sick of it. But then I got this one and I was absolutely in love with it. A beautiful Les Paul, the best one I've ever played. And also it's very pretty. So that's a bonus. So off to the next one, pretty much the opposite. The Tele, made by a Dutch guy, Haar. So if you translate that to English, it means hair. It's the last name of the guy, Erik van der Haar. Uh, and this is a beautiful, beautiful Telecaster as a Telecaster should be. So the neck is a compound radius neck, which means it's from more curve over here, 7.7 .7, I believe, to 9.5 inch over here. So that's because the high note are still easy to bend. Cool. Two Voodoo 50 pickups, uh, a pretty fat neck, maple with Indian rosewood, beautiful flame on there by the way. Just check it out. Fiesta Red, Relict I guess, it's a bit crackled, crackle <laughs> um, So we've got, the bridge has quite some twang. <laughs> So, and 
the neck is actually pretty fat. So you can do everything with this Les Paul. <laughs> with this Tally. It's twangy, but also pretty fat. You can rock out with it. Yeah. It's actually the third Telecaster I got. So the first one was an American Vintage 52 reissue Butterscotch Blonde. A pretty guitar, but not really my thing. I don't know. I didn't love it. So I sold it. The second guitar, probably a year or two later. An American Deluxe Telecaster. Probably the most beautiful Telecaster I've ever seen. But it was also the worst Telecaster I've ever seen. It was heavy. It was lifeless. Dead. Boring. No character. No inspiration from it whatsoever. It was a terrible guitar. So I got rid of that one. So I see you asking, why do you get all these guitars that you hate? Sometimes you just gotta try stuff out and secondhand buying is very interesting because you can always buy it and resell it for, if you do it smart, the same amount of money. And then the third one was Scheepsrecht, as we say in Holland, this beautiful tally. And this one is a keeper. It's an amazing thing. One thing there is about it, the high E. You hear? And I don't see why, because the action is not low and it doesn't touch anything from the looks of it. I checked the nuts, I don't know, but it's ringing. Probably need a luthier to check that one out. So next up, and this one is beautiful. The Duesenberg Fullerton CC, white. It's not super white, it's a bit cram off white, as they say. So. This one, let me start at the beginning. I was looking for a Gibson ES335, going to some stores, playing some of them, but this one store in Rotterdam, I was playing the ES335 and next to the Gibson was the Duesenberg stand. I saw those guitars and I thought, wow, what on earth is that? They have a pretty like characteristic thing in them. So I was hmm, attracted, but also appalled a bit, to be honest. So I played the 335s, but before I left, I briefly played this one and I actually pretty much liked it. The whammy bar is pretty interesting. Let me show you. The bridge, this part, actually wiggles in the top of the body. So the strings don't move in the saddle. They don't have friction. So when you do a pretty heavy dive bomb, let's just do it. in tune and that's pretty awesome for such a vintage looking tremolo system a little bit bigsby like it's it's truly amazing so in the neck oh wait i didn't finish the story so i went home bought a second then um, 335 because i was saving up the money and the opportunity came by a second then 335 so i got the 335 and i was just uh, appalled by the build quality. It was a, a terrible build quality. I'm sure it was built by a guy who on a Friday night just was craving for a drink, hurrying the job to finish the guitar. The bindings on the neck were done with axes, I'm sure. Very rough edges along the f-hole. I don't know man, that guitar and me, we didn't bond. So that's why I sold it again, pretty quickly after that. And for the money I sold it for, actually, I could buy this brand new Duesenberg Fullerton CC White. This guitar was a little discounted at the time because it was used as a showcase guitar for Pink Pop, a Dutch festival, but it was still in mint condition and I don't mind guitars that are used. Just a beautiful, beautiful guitar. <laughs> But because of the humbucker in the neck, we can still rock out. Yep, very sweet, doozy. So 
um, the way that this guitar has been set up is pretty fun. They use a machine. So let me just read it. All Duesenberg guitars are processed by another ingenious German creation. No, I'm not German, I'm Dutch. It's an entirely different thing and I don't like the comparison. Perfectly leveled and perfectly shaped frets guaranteed due to the Plek fret dressing machine. It's a machine that makes sure the guitar has been perfectly set up. And it works because this guitar has been very properly set up. All right, let's continue with the pièce de résistance, as they say in French. My beauty, the Fender Custom Shop Cunetto Relic Strat. So, it's a Strat, it's relic it's from the Custom Shop, as you can see over here. At the time they made this, they didn't stamp the Custom Shop logo on there, but just press it in the wood, as you can see. Beautiful neck also again flamed. What's my obsession with flame? I don't know. Fiesta red again. I don't like red to be honest, but yeah. Come on. Come on. It's just the way it is. Vintage single coils, beautiful output, pretty noisy as well in the studio. But hey, that's just how guitars are. So here is the certificate of authenticity, Fender. So built in July of 97. A 1960s Relic Stratocaster, R3271. So this guitar has actually been built by John Cruz, who became a master builder later. So at the time he built this guitar, he wasn't a master builder yet, but it's pretty cool to have his name stamped on the neck, as you can see in this picture. So I bought this, but it was in pretty bad condition. The frets were worn, so this guitar has been played a lot, I'm sure. So the second day I got this guitar, I brought it to the luthier to do a refret, and it's been done very good. So I think those were like my main four guitars. I've got some more, but these are my main four, the ones that I really, really love. Um, so let me know what guitars you really love. Your dream guitars or your favorite from your collection nowadays. Let me know and write them down in the comment section so we can all see. Have a wonderful day, thank you for watching. And please subscribe to the guitar channel, your favorite guitar channel, Paul Davis. <laughs> No, please subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. I appreciate each and every single one of you watching these videos. It means a lot. Um, thank you. Have a wonderful day. And see you next time. Cheers.